Hello everyone, this is Dart. Yesterday, September 10th, there was a live Q&A with Josh Allen and Ian Hazacostas. In this Q&A, they addressed a lot of the community's most frequently posed gripes where Legion is concerned. And I couldn't help but think some of the questions or answers were a little silly, dumb, or just not well thought out. So I have my own comments following the developer answers. There's quite a few concerns, so let's just jump into it. The first question. With the limited number of followers, why is there a cap? Will we get more of them as the expansion goes on? Ian says, yes, there will be more champions as the expansion goes on. Yeah, it is somewhat awkward that you get eight champions, but you can only use five. The reason for this is that while wanting players to feel in charge of their class, if all eight were allowed as active followers, it would quickly trivialize missions. Either that, or there would have to be more missions added to force player choice, and that would be too reminiscent of Warlords of Draenor. The idea was to push player choice without requiring constant micromanagement. And my two cents? Yeah, that's fine, but it's still silly and it feels kind of slipshod. Next question. Why nerf Rock Feather Kite and Brule Fist Idol? If you don't like the free flying interaction, surely you could have just nerfed the idol and left the kite the way it was. To this, Ian replied, the developers didn't want to recreate Aviana's feather exactly. Also, that sort of effect would cut into engineers' ability to sell goblin gliders, which are a godsend in this expansion. The toys encroached on class and profession space, and that was not the original idea. My reaction? Really? This will matter until Legion Flying goes live. Start earning flight if you want it. Next question. Dungeon experience feels low. Any plans to change this to level our alts faster? Since you would have to play through a significant amount of the storyline quest to unlock necessary max level features, no. And to this I'll add, you can make level 110 in one day from level 100 if you feel the need. This is a complete non-issue. Warlocks. And that was just the whole question right there. So, Ian took a shotgun approach at this and just went all over the place with it. There seems to be an issue where ramp time or resource buildup for optimal play on Warlocks is too long. And by the time a Warlock hits his or her stride, whatever he's fighting is dead unless it's an instance or raid boss. There is a hotfix coming to change the default number of starting soul shards from 1 to 3. With Demonology, if you could build up an army of imps or whatever, it'd be a better experience, but right now, there's such a narrow window of time that this is kind of underwhelming, and that may be addressed. Other general concerns were mobility, hard casts, etc. Those are not likely to change. For Legion, the philosophy is to double down on class strengths and not patch up weaknesses. They want to avoid homogenization and loss of class identity. As far as Destro locks, not liking mastery. Place fields too dependent on RNG, but it will still average out in the long run. So one Chaos Bolt may be mediocre, but the next may be absolutely lethal if you time it right. My perspective? Yeah, okay. One class down. The other 13 classes all have beefs of their own, and we'd love to know you're dealing with them. Mythics seem to favor cleave specs like Demon Hunter, Wind Walker. Any plans to boost the underperforming caster classes? Cleave, uh, caster cleavers. Say that a few times fast. 
Raids are coming, and other specs will be in a better place. Melee cleave abilities may work well in five-man instances, but not perform well in raid encounters. And my perspective on this, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but if last expansions and mythic five-mans are any indicator, then they're nothing. Wait till mythic raids and mythic plus dungeons go live. Next question. Considering we are one week into Legion, I would like to ask you what the plan is regarding balance. Will there be more frequent updates and fixes? Ian sort of said that the developers would prefer to sit back and watch for a while and make changes in a bundle and avoid knee-jerk hotfixes. There will probably be tweaks before raids open and there will be a will be hotfix notes to communicate those. There's lots of interactions between artifact traits and player specs and rotations that make things hard to predict without observation. Developers really don't want to make a wrong decision here. There are gameplay changes that they want to make but aren't really the realm of a hotfix and deserve to be made during a patch. So that will be upcoming in the 7.1 build. And for me, yeah, that would be a solid no. And to be completely honest, raids haven't gone live. Rated PvP hasn't gone live. Why do we need more hotfixes except for locks, which I guess suck? When will Monkroll be fixed? Hopefully soon. And that also applies to Demon Hunter, Fell Rush, and Flying Serpent Kick. The hotfix for that is being tested now. Yay, monks. Good for you. Do you have plans to continue the class hall story in 7.1? Not in 7.1. That relates to Karazhan, wrapping up Stormheim, and more about the Suramar insurrection. There is more story to tell, but it will come later than 7.1. Personally, I'd prefer they wrap up the class hall story and be done with it. I really don't want a Garrison 2.0 in Legion. Moving on. What's the reasoning behind the Warrior class campaign taking significantly longer than other classes? To quote Ian directly, we screwed up. The Warrior timing was actually supposed to have been the standard for all the classes, but there were bugs and unfortunately Warriors kind of got the shaft. Honestly, I'm glad for the screw-up. I'm not a fan of garrison play. Next question. Quest logs overflowing. What can be done? Needs to be double or just remove the limit? Yes, there's a lot of content. It's realistic to ride the quest limit. Quest log limit at times. Biggest concern with raising the limit, it becomes unwieldy to keep track of that many quests. Special storyline quests may be introduced down the road that don't count towards that limit. A quick thought for me. Once in a while, try actually competing, completing a few quests. Then they won't be in your quest log and you'll have room for more quests. What difference does it make if you take quests if you're not going to finish them anyway? By the way, the Alliance still needs Purple Lotus. Why is there cross realm zone in Legion's area? Okay. Ian went into a big discussion of new tech that supports how outdoor world works in Legion. Now there are iterations of areas that support X number of players. They don't want too many or too few players. The devs, ugh, I can't talk today, want more of a social feel rather than you being there alone, period. Also, for PvP servers, this puts Horde up against Alliance, even when the servers themselves have become 90% one faction. As far as bodyguard abilities, not obeying standard PvP rules, this will be hotfixed. Okay, here's my two cents worth. First, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels this way, I really don't care about the social aspect of the game while I'm soloing world content, because 9 times out of 10, I wind up saving people from their own overpulls 
or wind up with them dumping their spawns on me as they run away. And I sure don't like competing with them for ultra-rare mount dropping NPCs like Poseidus, the Time Loss Proto Drake, or Anx. And for that matter, I barely tolerate immature stupidity from dumb people on my server when I use the auction hall in Stormwind. So why do I want to put up with six or eight servers worth more? That's just my take on it. Next question. What was the reason behind gating the Sura Marquess and story behind a rep grind when none of the other zones required any such thing to get the full experience and story? First of all, it's an in-game max level zone. There's lots of different objectives. Suramar, the developers wanted to pace so people would have to come back to it as one of those objectives. It shouldn't be too grindy. There's lots of rep hidden in the zone quests, in the world quests, etc. It's a story and all that feeds into the player all of that feeds into the player learning about the Nightfallen. Basically, Suramar drives subscription counts. Will Suramar reputation be account wide? Getting alts attuned for the two mythic only Suramar dungeons could be painful. There are no plans to make it account wide. Alts should earn their own way. Pacing, the devs may take a look down the line, but there's already people getting into the mythic only dungeons in Group Finder. Alts drive subscription counts. Are you going to increase rep earned with various factions, or are you happy the way they are? To which Ian said, yeah, pretty happy. World quests and mysterious give plenty of rep. High-end rep goals are more for cosmetics than power items. Cosmetics drive subscription counts. Next question. Cosimuth, what inspired you guys to add this puzzle to Legion? The short answer was the creative design team. Also, the devs loved the idea of there being mystery and unknown things to find. Cosimuth was around for the beta, but the puzzle itself was kept back so it couldn't be data mined and pre-solved. So this is very much a puzzle that had to be crowdsourced and solved as a community. There will be a hotfix coming to make the orbs for this interactable for more than one person. Also, the person who found the Cosimuth puzzle was actually looking for something else entirely. And Ian said there's other hidden and secret stuff waiting to be found. Puzzles drive subscription counts. Okay, moving on. Am I ever penalized for queuing two artifact knowledge orders at once, or does the system adjust the days to keep in line with the catch-up mechanic. The order times are variable in the sense that they're there to keep you up with everyone else. If you hit level 110 the first day, you got a five-day work order for the first. After that, it would be a four-day work order. If you come in a month down the road with an alt, the alt will see a chain of three-day work orders until he's effectively caught up with the crowd. There is no penalty. Get your artifact power, spend your artifact power, Keep your work orders of artifact knowledge queued up. You have two work orders, so you don't have to log in every day. As long as you requeue after one expires, you'll be optimal. There's no weird mechanic that would hurt you if you queued up both orders. My reaction, if you already knew about the catch-up mechanics and how they worked, why did you bother asking this question to begin with? Will you be adding more new features to the companion app? Uh, Ian says, maybe. It's nice that people are using it. They want people involved in the game without feeling chained to it, so to speak. They will add more features if there are things that it could do that make sense. They want to help people keep up with the game, but not replace the game. Coming soon to an app store near you. World of Warcraft Go. What's the future of artifact weapons after Nighthold? Will there be new traits, slots, or something like that added in the future? To which Ian says, there will be something like that added in the future. They want artifact power to be something that spans the expansion, 
So there's going to have to be some place to use it. There will definitely be extensions of the artifact progression going forward. You didn't really think it was going to be that easy, did you? Any plan to allow players to carry over artifact power to a different spec if they find they don't enjoy it at max level? Uh, Ian says, no. That's the function of artifact knowledge. As you become more powerful, you can go do world quests and the like that grant enough artifact power to allow you to buy multiple artifact traits at once. Once you get the first golden trait at 13 points, it costs almost as much to get 13 points on another artifact as it does to get the 14th point on your main specs. All sales final, while supplies last. See store for details, void where prohibited. And speaking of sales, next question, auction hall is a mess. So many 400 stacks of one listings, why not limit stacks of 100 or less to 20 and unlimited 10 plus stacks? Ian just flat out said the auction hall is a mess. The in-game auction hall UI is overdue for a revamp and that would be a longer term project. Looking forward, some changes going forward in 7.1, part of the problem is that items are sorted by absolute total stack value. So a one stack item for four gold is listed before a five stack for five gold. The lower cost stack will always be listed first. They are looking at moving towards price per unit sorting, which will show you the best deals first. They don't want to limit the number of small stack size auctions because you may only need one or five of an item and not 100 or 200. They are going to try to remove the incentive to list one stacks. And when this happens, I'll be overjoyed. Until then, I'll still be using the auctioneer add-on. Any plans to improve the Guild Finder search system in-game? And Ian said, future expansion feature, definitely something that needs work. My reaction, something else that needs work, your social skills. If you're 12 years into this game and still can't find a guild, that might not be the game's fault. Any change or fix about Dalaran underbelly PvP problem in PvE realms? Short term answer for me in, buy a bodyguard. Otherwise, if you don't want the Rat Stallion or the rewards in the underbelly, steer clear. There have been reports of bodyguards leaving early. If that happens, they very much want detailed correspondence telling what was going on at the time. My thoughts? Or maybe just embrace the madness and have fun? God forbid you be required to do something different and new to solve a quest. Will the small amount of artifact power awarded in PvP be fixed so it is equal to the collection rate of artifact power in PvE? They are following this very closely. The reason it may seem low is that it's very easy to chain run PvP content and build up artifact power, so they played things conservatively. When rated PvP becomes available, that will become a more lucrative source of artifact power. PvE players might have an advantage over hardcore PvP players in the short run? Blasphemy. PvP, PvP, PvP. Uh, you could try World Quest if PvP isn't fast enough for you. Maybe do something other than, no, oh, I don't know, fight in the middle during Warsong Gulch BGs. Eh, just a thought. With the extended delay before we see a raid tier with actual tier... Can we expect more tiers without sets involved? Uh, maybe. Depends on the size of the raid. In other words, Blizz is going to do what Blizz is going to do. Do you have any control over what world quests spawn, or does the system randomly select them? And he said a little of both. Some of it's random, some of it is wanting to make sure there's a fair distribution. And to that I say, 
There's actually a guy at Blizzard's HQ who does nothing but decide whether or not to do the same world quests over and over again. And yes, it's the same bastard that spawned Magni in your garrison when you wanted the Ore Trader. Feel better for knowing. Are there any plans to apply the scaling technology found in Legion leveling to holiday content such as quests and bosses, allowing a greater range of player participation? And Ian said, holiday content is a great fit. They haven't done it yet, but it's a great suggestion and something they're very likely to do. Something I'm likely to do is make a video of the Grinch killing all the little low levels this winter. Should be great fun. How do you plan to pace content rollout compared to previous expansions? Um, Ian kind of stuttered and stammered around this one and said, uh, better. They want to avoid too much front loading. They want to avoid content droughts. They have a lot of story to tell, so they're working with how to deliver it. They want to do things in ways that make sense, and they want the game to feel alive. So, uh, I guess they want to do it in such a way that you won't bitch about it. Do world quests scale with item level, or will they just become trivially easy for greater rewards? Once you're max level, that's the end of scaling. They want a sense of player power progression. Difficulty progression will come down the road in the form of additional patches and content. Um, my thoughts on this, if you want a challenge, you could try rating on higher difficulties or the like. That definitely helps one stay humble. I want to know what you think. Leave your comments below if you like if you enjoyed this. Of course, dislike if you think I'm a horrible troll. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Once again, this is Dart. Good luck, have fun, go kill some bosses.